We've been looking at Philippians chapter 4 and how it deals with the issues of worry and fear and concern and anxiety in times like those that our nation is now facing. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, we've learned it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It says, if we do these things that we talked about, to pray, to bring supplication to God with thanksgiving, letting our request be known to God, that He will do something that does not make sense to those who have not experienced what He's talking about here. And this is that He will give a peace that passes understanding. That word peace means to pull together. He will pull us together in a phenomenal way. And that comes when we go to Him and take those burdens and cares to Him. John Newton is known as the writer of Amazing Grace. He wrote something else I want to share with you. He said, The men of this world would account it a high honor and privilege to have an unrestrained liberty of access to an earthly king. But what words can express the privilege and honor of believers who, whenever they please, have audience with the King of Kings, whose compassion, mercy, and power are like His majesty infinite. The world wonders at them that they are so patient in trouble, so inflexible in their conduct, so well satisfied with that state of poverty and obscurity which the Lord, for the most part, allots them. But the wonder would cease if what passes in secret were publicly known. They have obtained the pearl of great price. They have communion with God. They derive their wisdom, strength, and comfort from on high and cast all their cares upon Him who they assuredly know vouchsafes to take care of them. Newton says, what privilege and honor it would be if I could, whenever I want to, call my governor, my president, and they would take the call, they would stop whatever they were doing and listen to me. And the Bible says we have that privilege with someone far greater than a politician or an earthly ruler, with the God of heaven, the creator of the universe, Whenever I want, I can go and seek Him and pray to Him and talk with Him and commune with Him. Why should I be worried or concerned when I have that privilege? A couple years ago, my mom and dad went to see a doctor. And the doctor gave them some very bad news. And when he got through sharing the news with them, he said, I don't think you understand what I told you. And so he told them the news again. And my parents said, yeah, we, we've got that. We understand. And he said, I don't think you do. And he, he shared it with them again. And my mom said, look, what you're saying is, and she paraphrased what he said. And he said, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And she said, why don't you think we understand that? And he said, you're not acting like people normally act when I give them this type of news. And my mom said, look, you need to understand something. Nothing you have just told us has changed anything. When we got up this morning, our God was still on the throne of heaven. And when we drove to see you today, our God was on the throne of heaven. And as we have sat here in this doctor's office today getting this news, our God has still been on the throne. And you know what? When we leave here and we get in the car and we drive home, our God will still be on the throne. What you have said has changed nothing. You see, when we recognize the greatness and the sovereignty and the control of God, and this God that desires us to come and to reach and talk with Him, then the problems of this world take on a different light. Our God is still in control. And so I encourage you in the midst of this world with the uncertainty and the cares and the problems that we're facing, remember that that is not the only reality. There is a greater reality, and that that is that God is still in control.